हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द बायोटेक्निकाज यूट्यूब चैनल सो वी आर बैक अगेन विद द डिटेल डिस्कशन ऑफ द नीट एग्जाम पेपर दैट वाज हेल्ड ऑन जुलाई सेवेंटीन सो प्लीज कंफर्म एवरीवन इफ यू कैन सी सी मी एंड हियर मी सो दैट वी कैन स्टार्ट विद द लेक्चर सो प्लीज कन्फर्म यस इफ यू कैन सी मी एंड हियर मी so today we are going to discuss about the neat botany question papers so all, i have already discussed the 25 questions from from the neat botany syllabus so there were total 50 questions so i have already covered 25 questions and the remaining questions i will be discussing today so you already have the classes for zoology discussion chemistry so some part of chemistry is already left and today botany will be done so tomorrow we will be ending with the neat pyqs discussion but if you want to know more about the next batch batch when it is going to start so you can just write a mail to us at info@biotechnica.org you can also call us on a toll free number that is displayed on our screen or you can also join our telegram group the link you can find in the description below so please confirm if you can hear me and see me so that i can start with my lecture Hi Ankita very good evening welcome back So now today we are starting with the very first question that is 26 question from neat botany syllabus So it was about the hydrocolloid carrageen is obtained from So hydrocolloid is a water holding substances that will retain a large amount of water Now we all know that there are three types of algae one is chlorophyce that is green algae the other is phyophyce and the third one is rhodophyce that is red algae and we all know that these water holding substances it it will get from only phyophyce as well as rhodophyce that is from brown algae as well as red algae not from green algae so it is asking about the carrageen so this water holding substances or hydrocolloid it is obtained from red algae so what is the hydrocolloid that is obtained from brown algae it is algae so it is asking about a carrageen so this water holding substances it is obtained from red algae that is phyophyce now we have to select the correct answer so option first it is given rhodophyce and option fourth it is given phyophyce as well as rhodophyce but from phyophyce that is brown algae we only get algen hydrocolloid so the right answer for this question is option first that is rhodophyce now coming to next question that is question number 27 which of the following it not observed during apoplastic pathway now we all know that roots are the main source that absorbs the water and mineral from the surrounding in the plants so they will absorb all the water and minerals and this xylem will transport to the other parts of the plant so how this absorption of roots uh, this water and mineral is taking place in the root hairs so it is because of the apoplastic path pathway as well as the symplastic pathway so we all know that there are two types of pathway apoplastic as well as symplastic so what happens in apoplastic pathway so suppose this is a root here so what will have it will have epidermis cortex endodermis now this endodermis has casparian strip so what happens this apoplastic pathway it passes it carries all the water and mineral through the intercellular spaces or through the cell wall but it cannot actually cross the plasma membrane of the cells or the cytoplasm so once this casparian strip is found in the endodermis part what will happen it will bypass its root now what will happen this symplastic pathway will carry this water and mineral so this symplast symplast pathway it is known for cytoplasm so this movement is aided by cytoplasmic streaming so it is talking about apoplastic pathway but we all know that symplastic pathway it always carries water and mineral through the cytoplasm so this apoplastic pathway it is not for cytoplasmic streaming so this pathway is always continuous yes and does not provide any barrier to water movement so if we compare both the apoplastic and symplastic pathway so out of these pathway apoplastic pathway is the continuous 
pathway. So it occurs, it causes the movement of water that occurs through the intercellular spaces. Yes, so this apoplastic pathway, it occurs through the intercellular spaces as well as the cell wall, but not the cell membrane. So here we have to select the incorrect statement about apoplastic pathway. So the first statement is the incorrect. Why? Because here the transport of water and mineral, it is occurring through the cell walls as well as the intercellular spaces, but not with the help of cytoplasm, because this cytoplasm, it is utilized by symplastic transport. The movement does not involve crossing of the cell membrane. Yes, this crossing will happen in symplast, not apoplast. So we have to select the incorrect options. So option A is the incorrect option because it is talking about cytoplasm. And in symplast pathway, we have cytoplasm and plasmodesmata. Now coming to the next question. That is 28th. Given below are two statements. So one is labeled as assertion and the other one is reason. So here we have to select the correct statement. So assertion, it is talking about polymerase chain reaction is used in DNA amplification. Now we all know that to polymerize DNA, we have a technique called as polymerase chain reaction, which was given by Carrie Mullis. So yes, this statement is correct. Ki polymerase that is PCR, it is used for DNA amplification. The ampli ampicillin resistant gene, it is used as a selectable marker to check transformation. Again, this is a statement from recombinant DNA technology or gene cloning. So when we are doing a gene cloning, so as to select the transformed cells, we do have a selectable marker in a vector. So this selectable marker is a ampicillin resistance marker or it can be any antibiotic resistance marker. So again, yes, this is a correct statement. Now we have to select which statement is correct. So both the statement are correct, but we can see the first statement is from the PCR and the second statement that is reason is from the gene cloning. So both the statements are not interrelated to each other. That means reason is not as a reason for this statement but both the statement are true. So you can see in the third option, both A and R are correct, but R is the correct explanation of A, but this is not the correct state explanation. Both A and R are correct, but R is not the correct explanation of A. Yes, it is not the correct explanation of A because these both statements, they are talking about different concepts. This is from PCR and this is from gene cloning. Now let's move to question number 29. Which one of the following is not true regarding the release of energy during ATP synthesis through chemiosmosis? So here we have to select the incorrect statement about chemiosmosis. Now we all know that chemiosmosis theory, it was given by Michel in 1961 for the generation of ATP. So what happens here is basically the conversion or reduction of NADP to NADPH2. So when all the electrons, they are passed through the electron carrier, they will actually reduce this NADP to NADPH2. And that will cause the production of this energy source. So where this is formed, it is formed in non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So this statement is true. Make sure here we have to select the statement that is not correct or not true. So movement of proton across the membrane to the stoma. So what happens in chemiosmosis, once the electron they are passed through the carrier, that time whatever protons are there, they will be transferred to the thylakoid lumen. So there will be more number of proton inside the thylakoid lumen. So how they will move? They will move across the membrane to the stoma with the help of F0 particle, yeah, F0 particle. So again, this statement is true. So third is breakdown of proton gradient. Yes, proton gradient will be broken down because inside the proton that is H plus, it will be more. So it will be transported out of the thylakoid towards the stroma with the help of F0 particle. That means this proton gradient is broken down. So again, this is true breakdown of electron gradient. No, electron gradient is not broken down, but this gradient is maintained because all the carriers, they are accepting electrons. So how these electrons are accepted? It is because of the cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. All the carriers or the proteins that are involved in PS1 as well as PS2. So this statement is wrong and here we have to select which is not true. So fourth option is the right answer. That is not true about chemiosmosis theory. So now coming to next question that is 38 question. The flowers are zygomorphic in. Now we know that there are two types of flower. 
one is actinomorphic second is zygomorphic and we have third class also that is asymmetric so what happens in a actinomorphic flower actino means radial so when we cut the flower through any of the plane so what it will do it will create the equal halves this flower will be divided into equal halves if this flower is cut through any plane so what will get we get equal halves of flower but what happens in zygomorphic the flower is divided into two or halves only when it is uh, cut into vertical plane single vertical plane suppose if i'm considering this plane and i'm cutting this flower only then the flowers will be divided into two but in actinomorphic we can divide this flower into same halves by cutting through any of the plane so what are the examples of zygomorphic and actinomorphic here you have to select what are the flowers that are zygomorphic in nature so we all know that for actinomorphic we have the code like mdc mdc that means mustard datura and chili so these are actinomorphic flower so if you are knowing the examples for actinomorphic also you can do this question so here we have to select the correct answer for the zygomorphic that is bilaterally symmetric so mustard datura and chili they are for actinomorphic flowers so the rest of our option they are for zygomorphic and what are the examples of zygomorphic gulmohar cassia pea and bean so here we have to select the options for zygomorphic that is fourth option b and c because mdc code it is for actinomorphic flower but here the question is for zygomorphic so i'm sure this is clear to everyone so now let's coming to next question so again it's a statement based question where you have to answer about the mendel's law or mendel study so given below are two statement the statement first it is talking about Mandel studied seven pair of contrasting trait in pea plant and proposed the laws of inheritance. Yes, Gregor John Mandel, he is also known as the father of this genetics. Why? Because he was the very first man who studied this contrasting characters or explain all the crosses in the garden pea. So this statement is correct. And there he explained laws of inheritance. That is first law as well as second law. Now second statement, it is talking about seven characters examined by Mendel in his experiment on pea plants were seed shape and color, flower shape, pot shape and color, flower position as well as stem. End. Yes, this is again the true because Mendel studied these all characters. He took seven characters for his study and he proved the laws of inheritance based on all these seven characters. So both the characters, yeah, both the statement, they are true and they are related to each other. So in the light of the above statement, choose the correct statement from the options given below. Statement one is correct, incorrect, no, both the statement are correct. Statement one is incorrect, wrong. Statement one and two both are correct. Yes, both the statement are correct. He took seven characters and explained the laws of inheritance. So now let's coming to question number 32. What is the net gain of ATP when each molecule of glucose is converted to two molecules of pyruvic acid? Now we all know that we have respiration and in respiration we have glycolytic pathway that is the splitting of sugar molecule. So how this actually glycolysis is taking place? So we all know that there are 10 phase, there are 10 steps for glycolysis and this whole glycolysis it is divided into two steps. One is the preparative phase and one is the payoff phase. So when you see this glucose is converted to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So here two molecules of ATP are utilized. So two molecules are ATP are utilized, but here we have to answer the net gain of ATP that we are getting after the glycolysis. So now when this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is utilized as a substrate and this glycolysis is completed, at the last we are getting pyruvate and that is two molecules. So now again, here ATP is formed and also here ATP is formed. So again, two ATPs are formed. But make sure this glyceraldehyde 3 molecule, it is two molecules of glyceraldehyde. That means two ATP here and two ATP here. Total four ATP is formed and two ATP are consumed. That means four minus two is two ATP. So four ATPs are formed in the payoff phase and the preparatory phase, it consumes two ATP. So total four minus two is two. Now again here, we have to answer the net gain of ATP. Net gain is always the subtracted value, initial and final value, when we are subtracting the value. So this is four ATP minus two. So the net gain is 
to ATP during the process of glycolysis. So what is the right answer? Option first, that is to ATP. So now it's coming to next question that, that is again the statement based question where we have to select the correct statement. So given below are two statement that is statement one it is talking about decomposition is a process in which the detritus is degraded into simpler substances by microbes. Very true because we know decomposition. Decomposition means composition means forming. Decomposition means breaking of this substance. So it is a process when the all the organic waste yeah, waste is degraded into simpler substance. So once these organic substances are degraded, they will be converted to inorganic substances or substrate, or simply we can call it as simpler substances because organic, they are complex. Yes, this statement is true. And who is carrying this process? Microbes. So second statement is decomposition is faster if the detritus is rich in lignin and chitin very wrong because they are complex molecule so suppose if this waste is composed of complex molecule how will the microbes be breaking this uh, substances very quickly it will delay the process because if the uh, detritus or organic substances or waste is rich in water substances or nitrogen or protein so it will be easier for them to degrade this waste but if it is made up of lignin and chitin, it will always delay the process, not it with quicken. So this is wrong. So now we have to select the correct statement. Both statement one and two are correct, color. Statement one is correct, but statement two is incorrect. Very true. So the option first is the right answer because statement first is correct, but statement two is incorrect. Why? Because if it is given slower here, that means this statement is also correct. But if it is given faster, so this is wrong. Okay. So now let's coming to next question that is 34th. The process of translation of mRNA to pr proteins begin as soon as. Now we all know that central dogma of life, it talks about replication, transcription and translation. So what is transcription? It is the conversion of DNA to RNA. But when the RNA is or mRNA, it is translated into protein that is what called as translation. Now, how this translation is actually initiated or is started inside the cell. So once what happens, suppose this mRNA is formed, once the smaller subunit of the ribosome binds to the mRNA and then finds the very first amino acid ka sequence or COSAC sequence in eukaryote, it will cause the aggregation or the assembly of larger subunit. But when this translation is initiated, once this smaller ribosome identifies the sequence in the mRNA, once the sequence, the very first amino acid from where the translation will be started. So how it is started with the help of a smaller subunit of ribosome. So now let's read the statement and make the correct answer. So both the subunits join together, no. For very first, smaller subunit will bind and it will wait for the larger subunit of ribosome to aggregate over the sequence of the mRNA. The tRNA is activated, no. The smaller subunit of ribosome encounters RNA. Very true. Firstly, the smaller subunit of ribosome bind, not the larger subunit or not the small and large subunit together. Firstly, the smaller subunit will identify this mRNA sequence and after that, the aggregation of this larger subunit of ribosomes will take place. So the right answer for this question is option C, that is option third. So option third is the right answer. So now let's come to question number 35. Which of the following is incorrectly matched? And now here you are given four options. Here you have to select the correct and incorrect statement. Now we all know that there are three types of algae. Chlorophyci, phyophyci as well as rhodophyci. Chlorophyci means green algae. Phyophyci means brown algae. Rhodophyci means red algae. Now we all know that porphyra, it is a type of red algae. Now these, if you can see in the column second, they are given, what are, what are these substances? They are the stored substances. Yes, stored food material in these algae. So what is the name of this stored food material? So porphyra, it is a red algae. And we all know that in red algae, floridian starch is a stored material. So this is correctly mashed. Second is Volvox. Volvox is a green algae. And for green algae, it is starch. Again, this is a right statement. Actocarpus, third option, Actocarpus, it is a type of brown algae. And for brown algae, we have laminarin, mannitol, fucoxanthin. Again, this is correct. 
Fourth is Eulothrix. Eulothrix is a type of chlorophyci or green algae. But in chlorophyci, we have starch as a stored food material, not mannitol. Because I've already mentioned mannitol and laminarin, they are for the brown algae, not green algae. So this option is incorrect. And here we have to select the incorrect options. So accordingly, we have to select the incorrect option. So option four is the incorrect or the correct option. So accordingly, it is incorrect, but for us, it is correct option. So option D is the right answer. Now let's come to question number 36. Again, assertion and reason question from Mendel's law. So here you have seen, you have got two questions from Mendel's law, that is genetics. So given below are two statements, one is labeled as A and the other is R. So assertion, it is talking about Mendel's law of independent assortment does not hold good for the genes that are located on the same chromosome. Yes. So when Mendel's were proposing his laws, so there were two laws, law of independent assortment as well as law of segregation. So law of independent assortment is for the genes that are located on two different chromosomes, but not same chromosome. So it is saying it is not for the same chromosome. So yes, this is the correct statement. That means this law is proved when the chromosomes are apart, but not on the same chromosomes. So closely related gene assort independently, very wrong. If the genes are apart, means if the chromosomes are apart, they will follow law of independent assortment and they will assort independently. But if they are closely related, so they will never show this independent assortment, but they will follow the phenomena of linkage or recombination. Now let's come to the question what it is talking about. In the light of the above statement, choose the correct answer from the option given below. Now we have seen that A statement is correct and the R statement is incorrect. So A is correct and R is not correct. Yes, this is the right answer. So the right answer for this question is option first because assertion is only correct, but the reason is not the correct reason. So now let's come to question number 37. So which part of the fruit labeled in the given figure makes it a false fruit? Now we know that there are two types of fruit. One is a false fruit and the other one is a true fruit. What is a false fruit? The fruit that is formed from the thalamus or the ovary wall or the other parts of the flower, but not actually the ripened ovary. But in case of true fruit, the fruits are formed from the ripened ovary. So here you have to select what among all these four options, A, B, and C, D, makes the fruit actually a false fruit. So when the false fruit is made, when all the contents of a thalamus comes into a fruit, so where you can see the option C or the thalamus. So this is for thalamus. So this is the thalamus portion of the fruit. This actually makes the fruit a false fruit. So here we have to select the correct answer option. Which part of a false fruit actually makes the flower or a fruit a false fruit? So it is thalamus, that is the ovary wall or the part of the ovary that is not actually a ovary. So accordingly, this option is correct. That is option one. So now let's move to next question. Which of the following will accelerate phosphorus cycle? Now we all know that there are different types of cycles that are operating in the atmosphere and maintaining all the concentration, yeah, the amount of elements in the atmosphere. So for phosphorus cycle, how it is accelerated? So to accelerate this phosphorus cycle or to speed up this, we need weathering of rocks. So this is the main reservoir for this phosphorus cycle. So if the lithosphere is there, many rocks are there, what will happen? It will undergo disintegration. And this process is only what known as weathering of rocks. So when these rocks are weathered or disintegrated, they will be converted into smaller fragments or inorganic substances will be formed that will actually accelerate the phosphorus cycle. And how that nitrogen cycle is speeding up? It is because of rainfall in storms. So accordingly, we have to select the factor that will actually accelerate phosphorus cycle. So it is because of the lithosphere, many rocks, and when these rocks will be weathered or disintegrated, it will lead to phosphorus cycle. So accordingly, the first option is the right answer. The entire fleet of buses in Delhi were converted to CNG from diesel. In reference to this, which one of the following statement is false? Now here, you have to select the correct statement about diesel and CNG. Now you can see the strategy, how the question is being asked. It is given like experimental way to you, but here you actually have to convert or you have to compare these CNG and diesel. So now let's compare and read the statement, which of the following are the correct. Now you have to select the correct answer option. It is 
is cheaper than diesel. What CNG? What is CNG? Compressed natural gas. Exactly, it is cheaper than diesel. So this is the right answer. It cannot be adulterated like diesel. And then what is adulteration? Adulteration is mixing up of impurities to a pure substance. Like, like in diesel, we have some kind of impurities along with the pure form of diesel. But in diesel, in CNG, we cannot adulterate it. We cannot mix any kind of impurities. That is a pure form. So it cannot be adulterated like diesel. Yes, it is a true statement. CNG burns more efficiently than diesel. Very true. When we do a combustion process for CNG and diesel, and when we compare both of these process, obviously CNG will burn more efficiently than diesel. So yes, this is the correct statement. The same diesel engine is used in CNG buses, making the cost of conversion low. So now it is talking about, suppose a bus, if it is taking the help of CNG to run, but suppose if I'm replacing this CNG with the diesel, diesel engine so what it will do it will increase the cost because we have already seen that cng is cheaper than diesel but if we replace this cng buses with this diesel engine it will increase the cost it will not reduce it because diesel is more costlier than cng so the cost conversion is low no it is high so here we have to select the false statement then what is the correct statement? Option four, because this statement is only false because it will cause the process more costly. So now let's come to question number 40. What is the role of large bundle sheet cells that is found around the vascular bundle in C4 plants? Now we all know that C4 plants, their C4 cycle will run for photosynthesis as well as C3. So why this large bundle sheet cells are present? Now we all know that there are two types of cells in C4 cycle or C4 plants. So all the plants that are operating the C4 cycle, they will have both the C4 cycle as well as the C3. Why? Because they have two types of cell, mesophyll cell as well as the bundle sheet cell. Now the question is asking about why the large bundle sheet cells are present. So why they are present? So as to operate the C3 cycle. You can see here Calvin cycle, C3 acid is formed because carbon dioxide it is accept, accepted by the rubisco enzyme so what will happen this c3 cycle will run so to so as to run this c3 cycle they have large number of chlor chloroplast and these chloroplast are called as dimorphic chloroplast that means they are granal as well as agranal chloroplast so why this large bundle sheet cells are formed to enable the plant to tolerate high temperature no so as to perform the c3 cycle because it will have the rubisco enzyme to protect the vascular tissue wrong to provide the site for photorespiratory pathway not photorespiratory pathway but photosynthesis wrong to increase the number of chloroplasts yes the chloroplast number is increased so that more chloroplasts will be there and they will take care for the c3 pathway that is calvin benzyl cycle for the operation of calvin cycle yes this is the right statement so accordingly we have to select the correct statement and so hence option four is the right answer for this question now let's move to question number 41. Transposons can be used during which one of the following process? Is it audio radiography, gene sequencing, polymerase chain reaction, hello life signs, or gene silencing? Now we all know that transposons, they are the mobile elements or simply the junk DNA. So what is the function of this transposon? They will be utilized for gene silencing process. Now let's come to all the processes one by one. What is autoradiography? Autoradiography is simply used for the observation of bends. After we perform some kind of electrophoresis, that time we utilize this autoradiography. And this autoradiography, it will not utilize transposon, but it will utilize the hybridization process. That means this option is incorrect because we have to mention the process which is actually taking or utilizing transposons. What about gene sequencing? Gene sequencing is a process where we sequence the genome we sequence some kind of gene. So again, this will not utilize transposon. Polymerase chain reaction, nowhere it is utilizing because this is for the amplification of gene DNA. And what about gene silencing? Now this gene silencing can be with the help of siRNA, miRNA. So what happens, or it can be with the help of RNA interference. So what happens actually in RNA interference process, some kind of poly complementary DNA or RNA is required. So this transposon, which is mobile element or junk element, will actually serve as a complementary DNA sequence for the guide RNA. 
So what is this serving? This is serving the purpose of the complementary DNA or RNA strand. So this transposon, it is used or utilized during gene silencing processes for the help for the RNA interference or guide RNA. So for this question, option four is the right answer. So now let's come to question number 42. Which one of the following occurs due to the presence of autosomal link dominant trait? Here again, you can see it's a question from genetics. So here you have to select which of the following disease is an example of autosomal linked dominant trait. Now we all know that there are different kinds of diseases. X-linked recessive, autosomal recessive, X-linked dominant as well as autosomal dominant. So here we have to select autosomal dominant. So now let's read the options. What are the options given below? Which is the correct answer option? Hemophilia. We all know that hemophilia, it is an X-linked recessive disease. So this option goes wrong. Thalassemia. Thalassemia is related to the autosomal rec recessive. So when I was explaining this concept during the series, I've mentioned the examples for all of these genetic disorders. So there I've mentioned the disorders like hemophilia, thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, and all of these four options that are given. So thalassemia, it is an autosomal recessive, not X-linked. Again, this is wrong because here we have to select the dominant disorder that is bared on autosome, not X-linked. Sickle cell anemia, again, it is similar to thalassemia. It, it, it is a autosomal linked recessive disorder, not dominant. But what about myotonic dystrophy? Only one option is left. That will be the right answer. Even if you are not knowing about myotonic dystrophy, but if you are knowing about all other three options that are lex linked recessive or autosomal recessive, you can reach to the final answer. So this myotonic dystrophy, it is an autosomal link dominant trait. So accordingly, this option is the right answer. Now let's move to question number third, 43. Here, you have to match the definitions of the chromosome. Now we all know that there are four types of chromosome, chromosome that are present inside the cell or simply nucleus. Metacentric, acrocentric, some metacentric, telo. Now firstly, I will match the telo because that is very simple. Telo means terminal. So where I can see the terminal? Telo means terminal. So I can see terminal only on option D. So D is second only found in third option that is D with second. Now let's match other option. Now if you see the chromosome, this acrocentric, it will be near to the terminal, but not at the extreme terminal. But what we see in case of telocentric, it is like this chromosome will be like towards the end. This is centromere and again towards the end. So towards the end, but at acrocentric, it will be not at the extreme end, but towards it. So this is the example for acrocentric. Now where we'll find C with four. Centromere slightly away from the middle forming one shorter and one longer. You can see that is one shorter chromosome PR and the one longer. Then what is metacentric? Meta means middle. Meta means between means both the chromosome will be of equal halves. So centromere in the middle or between forming two equal arms of chromosome, that is with A. And the leftover is submetacentric, it will go for first option. But here I have solved this question only with one option, that is telo means terminal. And if you are finding D with option two, it is only given in the one option, that is option third. So accordingly, this option goes right for this question, that is 43. So now let's come to the next question that is from the phospholipidia plasma membrane or simply cell biology. Read the following statement on lipid and find out the correct set of statement. Now here you have given five statement about lipid and you have to find out the correct statement. Lecithin which is found in the plasma membrane is a glycolipid. Wrong because it is a type of phospholipid not glycolipid. So first three statement is wrong. Now we have two different kind of fatty acid. One is saturated, other one is unsaturated. Unsaturation means more number of double and triple bond. Saturation means no double and triple, only single bond. So saturated fatty acid possesses one or more carbon double bond? No, because I have mentioned it is single bond. But if it is unsaturation, it will have double and triple bond between the phospholipid. So again, this statement is wrong. So here we have to select the correct answer. So gingerly oil has lower melting point, hence remains at oil in winter. Information based statement. And yes, this is a true statement. Lipids are generally insoluble in water. Why they're insoluble in water? Because this phospholipid, they are made up of a long fatty acid chain. 
that will not be dissolved in water, but it will be dissolved in organic compounds like benzene, chloroform, and other thing. And it also has a polar but a small hydrophilic hat. So, but a long hydrophobic tail is present. So, that's why it is not dissolved in water. Yet, this is a right statement. True. When fatty acid is esterified with glycerol, monoglycerides are formed. Yes, very true. When fatty acid will combine with glycerol, what will happen? Monoglyceride, triglyceride or diglycerides will be formed. So, yes, this is true. Now, here we have to select the correct statement. So, where we can find option C, D and E. I can find option C, D and E only in one option that is option first because A and B statement they are incorrect. So now let's come to the next question that is 45th question. Addition of more solutes in a given solution will. Now we all know that suppose this is a I have three two beakers. This is a pure water. And here I am adding water along with salt. So we all know that pure water has a water potential of zero. So what it will do if suppose I'm adding more salts or sugars into it, what will happen? This solute will dissolve in water. And if I'm sol dissolving this solute, so what will happen? This pure water, water potential, it will go in towards the negative value. Why? Because water potential, potential of the water, that is pure water. Pure water is the highest value, it is zero. But suppose if I'm adding solute, the water potential will decrease, not decrease. Uska potential kya hoga? Come. Because we are mixing more solutes into it. It can be in the form of salts or sugar. So which of the following is the correct answer option? So pure water ka water potential, it is always psi is equals to zero. But if we add the solutes, it will go towards the negative value. So it will make its water potential zero? No. It will not affect, no, it will affect the water potential. It will raise its water potential, no, it will decrease the water potential. It will lower its water potential to the negative value, yes. So this is the right option, that is option four. It will lower its water potential from zero towards the negative value. So now let's come to next question. That is match the flying question. So here you have to match the examples along with their life cycle. Now we all know that Spirogyra is a green algae. So what it will do? It has a dominant haploid leafy gametophyte. So where I can find option A, option A with four only in one option that is option third. Now fun, they are a pteridophyte and if they are a pteridophyte, they will have a dominant diploid sporophyte vascular plant. So option B will go with first option. Funaria, it is a type of bryophyta, mosses. So it will go for dominant haploid free living gametophyte and cycus is for Cycus means it is a type of gymnosperm that is seed bearing, but it is not an angiosperm. It will not bear any flowers and fruit. So always the gymnosperm, they have the diploid sporophyte alternating with reduced gametophyte. So if you are knowing about the life cycles of all these um, organisms or simply plants, what it, it is given, so you can just do it. And if you are knowing one option only correct, you can make out the right answer. Because you can see A with option four, it is given only in one option, that is option third. So accordingly, this option is the right answer. So now let's come to another question. While explaining interspecific interaction of population, plus sign is assigned for beneficial interaction. Minus is assigned for detrimental, means death. And zero for neutral. So we know that there are many different kinds of interaction between species, whether it is plants or animals. More than most of the time, this interaction it is seen in animals. So here you have to select the correct statement for plus and minus. And we all know that commensalism is a type of interaction where one species is benefited and other species is neutral. It is neither benefited nor harmed. So plus and zero interaction. So this is wrong because here we have to select the interaction that is plus and minus. Means one species is benefited and the other one is harmed. So in competition, suppose if two species are competing each other, that means they both are harmed during the process of competition. That means they will have minus minus interaction, not plus minus. They will have minus minus because they are fighting for each other. It can be mate, it can be food, it can be shelter. Now the third option is predation. When it comes to predation means predator, it is feeding on a prey. 
and if predator is getting food from a prey that means this is a positive interaction for the predator because it is benefited from the prey yes one positive interaction but the prey it is becoming dead why because it will be consumed by the predator so it will be harm for the prey because prey it is consumed by the predator so plus minus interaction we have got and the question it was asking about plus and minus so accordingly third answer is the right answer now what we'll see for amensalism it is minus zero one is harmed and the other one is a neutral interaction that is zero so this is wrong so the right answer for this question is option third that is predation now here you have to select the palindromic sequences of dna so we all know that restriction enzyme when it cut the dna it will always cut the dna data palindromes now what are palindromes the sequences that will read the same forward and backward so if you see the fourth option that is 5 dash gatak that is the sequence for the e coli and here if you see it is again c t t a a g so if you read the same sequence it will come the same forward and backward so if you are reading in both the orientation it will be the same g a a t t c g a a t t c g a a t t c that means this sequence only bit be identified by the restriction enzyme so here we have to select the correct option so palindromic sequences that will read the same forward and backward so it is only the fourth statement that will be identified by a particular restriction enzyme it can be any so the right answer for this question is option four now let's come to question 49 if a genetist uses the blind approach for sequencing the whole genome of an organism followed by assignment of function to different segments the methodology adopted by him is called as now here again this is an experimental type question where you have to select the suitable technique so what are the express sequence tags the mrna fragment that we get after sequencing of the cdna so it is not talking about any structure and function so this option is correct wrong so bioinformatics bioinformatics is just a use of computational tools to identify or to interpret the biological data it is again a wrong sequence annotation is a process where a researcher or a, any kind of a working genetist it will mark the sequence of dna rna and protein suppose i have this dna so i will mark this sequence why i will mark the sequence because here i'm going to mark the structure and the functions of these segments so suppose if i'm knowing this is gene a and b and if i'm knowing the function of this gene b what i'll do i'll just mark this sequence with the help of some tools in the dna and i will identify its function so this is what called as sequence annotation annotation means marking we are marking or we are defining the function of these structure or simply genes in our dna rna or protein yes so it is talking about marking and assigning of function so this marking and assigning of function is only done with the help of sequence annotation so this is a process by which we can define any functions to the gene so the third option is the right answer and what is this gene mapping it is the location of the genes on the chromosome so here we can't define any functions through the gene it is only done through option three that is sequence annotation so now let's come to the last question that is 50th question that is again from the plant's anatomy here the anatomy of a spring wood shows some peculiar features identify the correct statement about spring wood here you have to always remember if it is talking about correct or in incorrect so we all know that there are two types of wood early wood that is also called as spring wood autumn wood that is also called as late wood now this is spring wood it is formed in spring season now this autumn wood it is formed in winter season so this is spring wood is also known as early wood yes this is correct in spring season cambium produces xylem elements with narrow vessel this is wrong because in early wood or a spring wood if we see the cambium activity is very active the cambium is very active and so it keeps on dividing and the number of vessels that it will be forming it have the wider lumen means wider lumen will be having in the vessels but here it is talking about the narrow vessels narrow vessels will be formed in autumn wood not spring wood why because the spring wood is always active it is lighter in color yes very true the spring wood along with autumn wood shows alternate concentric ring forming annual rings so both the annual rings will be seen in 
spring wood as well as autumn wood so yes this is correct annual rings will be visible in both kind of wood whether it is spring as well as autumn yes correct it has lower density yes the autumn wood it is higher in density but spring wood it is lighter in color and has lower density yes correct so we have find found four statement out of five statement as the correct answer that is statement a c d and e so where i can find the correct statement why because it is asking about the correct set of statement so where it is a c d and e option 4 so option 4 tells about a c d and e correct statements are correct and also we have seen the cambium is very active and produces broad vessels not narrow so accordingly this fourth option is the right answer for this 50th questions and with this we have completed the all the discussion detailed discussion about the botany section so we have already done with zoology and botany that means biology is completed and we have also done with chemistry so only one lecture is left for chemistry so tomorrow it will be held so at then we will be completing with this detailed discussion of neat exam paper that was held on july 17. so thank you everyone for watching this session if you really like the session do not forget to share and subscribe to the channel that is Biotechnica. Meet you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Have, have a nice day.